following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, today my guest will be Archibald Samuel Arrington Hicks Crawford, Arch Crawford from Crawford Perspectives. And uh, he'll be on at the 9.30 hour. And then what we're going to do is talk about a few of these markets that look interesting. Boys and girls, uh, I have to get on my soapbox today because I see something that is uh, troubling. As they, if you remember Robert Merrill in the uh, Music Man, there's trouble in River City. Well, I think there's trouble in River City. Let me explain to you what's going on here, folks. This is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange site that we talked a little bit about yesterday where you go to look at the volume and open interest and stuff like that. Let's just take a look at what's happening with the volume here over the past um, the past few um um, well, the last couple of – well, this is the last month from August 25th to September 28th. As you can see, the volume is uh, you know, dissipating quite a bit. Even the volume in the options has slowed down a little bit. But that's not the important thing, folks. Yesterday I talked about going to the CME and uh, learn how to look at the open interest, interest of what's going on because, again, yesterday uh, with the market being up, you had a drops in open interest. I mean, this is this is not a good site. Let me just look at this chart here, uh, going back uh, to 2011. Silver and gold, they were exactly the same. I pulled this one up because I still had it. But um, you have the opening price dropping and prices rising. The problem is you don't know how long it's going to take for that to work. Uh, that's the that's the bottom line. In other words, it could be an up another week, another two weeks. We don't know, but it's starting to drop, and it has been for quite some time. And it's not just been due to the expiration of the September options because that was done last week, and nobody came in to take up that slack. So what's been happening is it's short covering, and once that is over, it's going to leave a vacuum in the market. At least that's what it's always done historically. So keep in mind, this is not a good thing. I'm just uh, reporting you. I don't want to be the, the – don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the bearer of bad news, and it might be good news. Who knows? Anyway, if we look at this graph that we get from um, the markets – this is from, I believe, um, John Murphy's book on technical analysis. And if we just take a look here, you'll notice that when you have rising open interest, uh, rising uh, markets, and falling open interest, the market is weakening, and that's what we've been seeing here in the E-mini S&P. So we'll watch it, uh, you know, very closely as we uh, come up with it. Uh, I wanted to cover a couple of stocks here. First of all, uh, a few weeks ago we talked about Apple. And the fact that it had completed all of the big patterns on the long 1.618 expansions on the weekly basis and the first sell-off in Apple should have been a corrective move just like we had during the May uh, through June area. Uh, we did exactly that. We went right down. We went right down to the 149 level. And since that time, uh, all we've been able to do in Apple is to come up and make a, a 30. In fact, we missed a 38 percent retracement by about 30 cents, at least so far. But that's another chart that looks extremely bad. And that's been one of the leaders uh, of the market, of course. It gets all the free, uh, what we call it, uh, advertising and stuff. So. That one looks pretty bad. That's uh, all I can. When all Amazon doesn't look any better, it has that huge head and shoulders pattern that looks, uh, you know, very, very ominous. But uh, the market has not turned down as yet. So we're going to see uh, what's going to be happening with it. Now, we do have a market that deserves our attention this morning, uh, and it's the foreign currency market. Let's just take a quick look at the euro here. And then I wanted to go into uh, talking about foreign currency here a little bit. Uh, this is the euro on an hourly basis going back over the past month. You can see that head and shoulders pattern. You see the ABCD move to the downside. Uh, we broke below the 78% level, and now we rallied back uh, to almost the exact 38% retracement. We're in about within about 10 pips of that right now. This is going to be very, very important, folks, because 
that's where it broke down from. And, uh, you know, technical uh, analysis she says those things act as magnets sometimes, so you want to be able to uh, to do it. Now, I've asked to talk a little bit about foreign exchange. Uh, first of all, I want to mention something. Uh, those of you, we had John Jameson from the Isle of Man here um, a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to be doing a webinar with John uh, sometime in October. I went through it with him yesterday. It'll be a little over an hour, folks. Uh, I know I don't do a great job of selling things, but uh, you got to listen to John Jameson. He is one of the smartest guys I have ever met, and he's got some of the greatest statistics on the market and in foreign exchange, also in the stock market, that you'll be able to use and profit from. It's it's really spectacular how good the guy is. Um, uh, we were going to do it together, but frankly, after listening to him for a little over an hour and a half yesterday, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't give him the whole time to describe the statistics. And these statistics are based on things that I put in my books years ago that he went back and proved empirically that they work. One is the opening price, how to use that opening price in the S&P futures, how to use it in foreign exchange. And the other thing that was really interesting, and Jim Twentyman certainly enjoyed this, is that he, he, he related these harmonic numbers to the actions in the market that uh, uh, as far as what time that usually occurs. And it's really, uh, it's going to be a great Great webinar, so I really hope that you'll have a, a chance to attend it. But it's going to be a really, really, and I know it's going to be a good one because he had me enthralled for uh, an hour and a half. And <laughs> the only time I get enthralled for an hour and a half is when I'm in a poker tournament winning, uh, which isn't often. Okay, let's take a quick look at some of these things on the foreign exchange markets. Um, the question was, which foreign exchange markets do I trade? Basically, I like to trade the big six. That's the euro, the yen, the pound. The, the uh, euro, the yen, pound, Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, and uh, Australian dollar. Those are the big six. I don't look at the New Zealand dollar and, and some of the other crosses nearly as much, and they're always a cross against the U.S. dollar. I do look at some of the exotics, which they're not that exotic, but the yen, pound, euro, pound, uh, euro, yen, those are the ones that where you cross those big countries together because that's where the money is moving. And uh, those are the ones, and, and I can only follow about eight or ten of those things. But when you add the, the crude oil, the gold, and the treasury bonds, the stock index, and soybeans, and a few others, you know, I keep pretty busy. What I look for is to try to find those three or four setups that look absolutely the best, and those are the ones that, uh, you know, I'm really, uh, really looking at. Now, I wanted to, in fact, here's one of these today. We'll just bring this up here to uh, let you take a look at it, just if I can get it ready here. This is it. This is uh, hold on. That's not the one I wanted. This is uh, and this is one we don't trade very often, so I don't have to worry about you trading it, which is good. All right, here's the here's October hogs. This is several days ago. Now we're still trading at 55.50 is where we closed uh, yesterday in the hog. So we're still in that same area. We've got three drive to a, a bottom pattern, uh, and of course uh, we're coming into delivery in October here in another week or so. So open interest is dropping in that. But if you look at December hogs. Look what's happening to December hogs compared to what's happening to October hogs. This is really unusual. In other words, people are selling October and buying December. And December is, you know, five cents higher. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to take a look at this gold market. Uh, I put up the uh, the intraday chart that we're looking at, and it shows a beautiful 382 retracement up there at the, the 13, uh, 18 level. Uh, we're now trading 30 bucks uh, below that. And so my assumption is that we're heading down another 30 or $40. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. Um, and, you know, and once we broke that uh, 12, in fact, we've rallied back to that 1291 level, which is actually uh, pretty good. And uh, anyway, that's uh, what we're watching here uh, in the um, in the gold market. Anyway, but keep an eye on this because if we can get uh, the gold to close above that 1318 level, that would be uh, what I would think a pretty bullish scenario uh, in the gold if we could get that. But we're not getting any help from the XAU, and let's just put this up here. So uh, uh, hold on just a second. Let's get this up here. Oh, well, maybe these charts are not coming up like they should. Sorry, folks. This is the gold one. This is the gold XAU. Uh, as you can see here, we're back here at that same level we were. We gapped down. That's not a good sign considering the market was up. Uh, the stocks were up, but we'll see if that continues on or not. But right now, that gold chart is, just does not look uh, very interesting at all uh, from a bullish uh, perspective. I just don't see any any reason at all to even um, think of being long gold until we get about 40 bucks lower, then you'd have a better better chance of, uh, you know, finding something that looks, uh, you know, relatively uh, interesting anyway. But we do have a metal that is interesting, and that's the copper. And I wanted to bring that to your attention because we're starting to get a little bit of a bounce today in copper. And if we can get copper up around this uh, 303 level in Christmas copper, December, uh, that would be a 382 retracement. And uh, that would be a real interesting one uh, from the short side because you've completed the big ABCDs uh, going back over the last year and a half in copper. And that's a pretty good uh, indication of taking a look at it. Folks, when I started this show, I talked about the open interest and what's happening with that. Don't, don't dismiss that. I mean, that's, that's really important because that's where the buyers and sellers come from. And if they leave, there's a vacuum there. And that's what happens during these times. Each time we've had this, it, it just doesn't fail. I mean, you can't show me a, a situation where open interest drops and prices go up that is bullish. That just doesn't happen because the people are leaving the market. So pay attention to that. 
that. That's going to be interesting. And not only that, but we're coming into the big daddy rabbit of them all, and that is this big Bradley date that we got coming in here on two. I think it's Wednesday. That's going to be real interesting uh, to look at, and we'll see if uh, see if you'll be able to see it. Uh, they're saying, did I post a gold chart? Of course I posted the gold chart. I'm posting them one at a time. If they're not coming through, I'm a sad camper. Uh, okay, we do have it. That's good. All righty, we got a question. We have Arch Crawford is going to be our guest here in about uh, 10 minutes, so that'll be fun chatting with him about the markets and stuff. So we'll watch it uh, very, very closely, of course, to what he has to say. And then we will move on and talk about the uh, one other one that I wanted to cover before we get to the uh, to the next break. And let me get this up here so we can look at it. This is the Dow Jones Utilities. Uh, we're at a really uh, important moment of truth here in the Dow Jones Utilities. You'll see that uh, there's been a really uh, well-defined trend line since March, and we've hit it again yesterday. So any weakness below that would signal that we're heading down because we did make a ABCD 1.27 expansion up there about 40 points higher in the utilities. That's basically a proxy for the interest rates that certainly look like they want to go higher, you know, basically looking at the charts. That's, uh, you know, that's what, regardless of what the Federal Reserve decides to look at, that's what we're watching uh, as we as we look at these things. I have a question about crude oil this morning. Uh, crude oil looks like it, uh, it still wants to... Uh, uh, to, to go lower, I mean, we haven't been able to get above this uh, 52 and change. The heating oil has certainly missed its target. So I would certainly, uh, you know, watch it because if we can get crude oil above 53, that opens the door between 55 and $58 per barrel. But frankly, I just don't think it's going to be able, you know, it's going to be able to, uh, it's going to be able to do that. Now, and one of the questions that we had from an email last night was about trading these foreign exchange markets uh, using smaller time frames. And I'll, I'll just give you an example. Last night, folks, this is the um, Australian dollar. And as you'll notice here, over the last three days, we made a beautiful ABCD pattern. The cycle structure was pretty much spot on. Uh, the, the numbers were good. And you got a very strong rally of over $600 uh, in the uh, Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar during that time. Now, $600, that's equivalent to 12 handles in the S&P, and we haven't seen too many 12-handle moves in the S&P recently, so this moves quite a bit, which is good. The good part about this is that you can trade these foreign currencies for a risk of about 30 pips, which is roughly $300. A pip in foreign exchange is, it means PIP, means percentage in price. And so it's actually the, the tick is what it is, but, you know, the foreigners, they like to do it a little differently. But that's what that's what we're watching here is you don't have to risk mostly 30 pips is all you'll have to risk. The only exception possibly would be the Japanese yen because <laughs> it's the pork bellies of the uh, of the foreign exchange market. It really jumps around quite a bit. And as you can see, we've had a lot of resistance up here at this 113 level in the uh, Japanese yen. So whether that's going to continue or not, you know, we'll we'll need to uh, we'll need to wait and see. Okay, now let's move on. And one other question that I wanted to cover, and that was about. Uh, oh, the Dow Jones Transportations. Let's get this up here because we've had a pretty big move here. We've gone into new high ground in the Dow Jones Transportation. And, um, you know, why shouldn't it? Everything else is going into new high ground. Uh, people ask me if I'm concerned about whether it goes into new high ground on these things. Folks, I, I really don't have an opinion on it. I mean, I, I think we're in, in an area where it's going to top, but you know, you, you, you don't know where the exact top is. You have to take a few shots at it. If you remember Paul Tudor Jones, when he was getting started back in 1986, they interviewed him in the Wall Street Journal. And they said, boy, it must be really great to be Paul Tudor Jones to pick the exact bottom in the Treasury bond market before they rallied 20 points. And Paul Jones said to the reporter, he says, well, that's not really accurate reporting because it should be reported as Paul Tudor Jones picked the exact bottom in the Treasury bond market before they rallied 20 points. 
after missing the previous five bottoms. So, uh, you know, sometimes you got to kiss a few frogs to get the princess, boys and girls. So just remember, keep your losses small. Keep your powder dry. Always keep a, uh, a towel ready for a crying towel when you're wrong and just move back into the game and take responsibility for your trades, as Mark Douglas always said. And you should come out of this game okay over a long period of time because losses are like breathing. You've got to learn to take them, shake them off. That's what you have to do. Uh, if you ever played golf, the absolute most frustrating game in the world is to, um, you know, you don't throw your clubs in the, in the, in the water just because you uh, shoot a 26 on one hole. You learn how to play a little better, and maybe you get down to playing 14 per hole, uh, and that's pretty much it. Actually, I'm a two handicap right now. I'm very proud of that. My handicap is driving and putting, and, of course, the mental game is also a handicap. But anyway, I've only played two rounds of golf in my life. Uh, one was with the... Um, uh, windmills and the other ones at a regular course. Let's take a break here. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Stan the Man, Arch Prophet. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new Market Safe Emerging Currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks. Uh, unfortunately, we are having a little technical difficulties getting uh, Arch uh, on the show. So, frankly, uh, we will um, 
um, see if we can get uh, moving here. I know some of the folks are unable to get into the den today. I don't know what the the technical problems are uh, or anything, but we'll keep an eye on it. But but Arch and I were chatting yesterday, and he did want to. Um, give us uh, some information that uh, he thought was very important. Of course, we do have this Bradley stuff coming up over the weekend, and um, that ends the Hebrew cycle of uh, Rosh Hashanah, and we'll see if we're uh, getting going here. Maybe we have him right now. Let's see if we have him. Uh, okay, uh, we... <laughs> All right, I agree. We need longer breaks. Anyway, let's take a look here at what Ar what Arch sent us uh, regarding the... Um, the gold market, because this is one that really is what we've been talking about. Take a look at this gold chart that uh, Arch has given us, folks. You'll notice here on this long-term weekly chart, they talk about the Golden Cross. That's where the, uh, I believe that's where the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average cross. And I don't use those very well. That's I don't use them at all. But um, those, you know, the, the master of this, of course, is our good friend uh, Basil Chapman. No one can use uh, moving averages better than him. He really has a good handle on it in the way that he measures his uh, price swings. But if you take a look at this long-term gold weekly chart, you'll notice that the downtrend line that was broken here, you know, back about uh, – Oh, 15, about two months ago, when we broke above the 1254 level, uh, we're coming down to touch that line. And that goes right to the level that we're looking at as far as hitting the uh, spot where we're, you know, um, uh, oh, Arch is having telephone problems. That's what the problem is. We'll get him on another time then. But if you look at this weekly chart, coming in around that 1250 level is what's interesting. And if you if you remember when we were talking uh, earlier this morning on the gold, let's just look at this, bring this up to show you how it fits together, which is really quite interesting. And that is you'll notice that the ABCD structure on this takes you right down to around 1245, which was in $5 of what that looks like on the weekly basis. And of course, this is an hourly chart. And as we get there, we're going to have a better indication of where we stand. So we really need to watch that price level of uh, around 1250 to 1245 in the gold if we get there. We're, we're 40 bucks away from that. But in gold, you know, that's a heartbeat. So that's really uh, not very much. So uh, that's a, a one that looks uh, real interesting. And, of course, it will probably be helped uh, by the U.S. dollar. And uh, I just wanted to uh, bring up a chart here on the U.S. dollar. We're going to do it two ways. I'm going to look at it on the longer-term basis here in the U.S. dollar because we've had a little bit of a bounce coming off of that 382 and 50% level, which is interesting. But, you know, we don't trade weekly charts. So what we'll look at now is uh, from our good friend over across the pond, we're going to be looking at the uh, U.S. dollar index. Hold on here uh, one second here on a daily basis, but we've put some price levels in here and also some patterns that look really interesting. So just give me one second. Wow. Now you'll see the... Uh, pattern that we have here in the U.S. dollar index on a shorter term basis. We've completed an ABCD pattern. Uh, that tells us that we should back off just a little bit here. That would make the euro a little stronger. And the euro has bounced 110 points uh, so far uh, from the bottom, which is actually a pretty good thing to, uh, to look at. So we'll see if this is going to be a correction here. The euro should have some very, very strong resistance in that 118.40 level, folks. There should be some really strong resistance there. Uh, we're trading at 118.20. Uh, the high has been 118.32, and that tells us that we're most probably coming up to some really strong resistance. And the reason why that resistance is strong in the euro is that it's exact 38% retracement of the move from the last high. 38% retracements are very important when you're in really strong trending markets, which we are having here, and that's why it is uh, getting it. So we'll uh, we'll do our best to uh, – what we'll do is we'll just get Arch on at another time because we've only got a few more, and I, I really enjoy talking to him. So And he's got some great information, but evidently he has some uh, telephone problems. Uh, he doesn't live very far from me, so uh, we're, we're on the same – 
telephone network, but sometimes, you know, things don't work the way you'd like. But I did chat with him last night, and we'll see if uh, if that's going to be uh, – uh, well, we're not going to get him on today, so we'll, we'll have him on another time. But I will, I will uh, share his charts with us because I think some of them are very important – you know, just to take a look at here, and the next one we'll look at here is we'll we'll see here is the Treasury. When we're talking about the Treasuries here, you'll notice this is a, a chart that also, um, let's get this up so we can take a quick look at it here. You'll see that uh, this is showing us that interest rates appear that they want to go higher. That's it. These are the Treasury notes, the interest rates on Treasury notes. They are going higher. That's the question is how high they're going to go before they reach that point where it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, apparent to a lot of people that it's going to be, uh, you know, a whole big difference. So we'll see. Now, there's a slight divergence in the market, folks, as we're making new highs in some of these indices. Uh, the NASDAQ is, is the lagger. And the reason why I believe that NASDAQ is a liar, <laughs> is, is lagging, is because uh, it has a, um, you know, a very, very bearish pattern in Apple and a very, very bearish pattern in Amazon. Both of those have extremely bearish patterns. And, you know, they might fail, but right now it's telling us that that's what we're, that's what we're seeing here in both of those stocks. And that's a big thing. Now, we're, we're, we're strong this morning, which is the last day of the month in an up month. You know, the odds of it closing lower today are not very good because you're, when you're in an up month and an up week, um, you know, in making new highs, there's very little selling wanting to come in here to see if that is uh, going to be the uh, the case. That's got to be Arch's cell, cell number, Sarah. Can you answer it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll just get this and we'll see uh, what we're doing here. Yeah. And it's also the end of the quarter. That's true. That's, that's true, Peter. So that's just hold on one second here. What? Is that Arch? Yeah. Arch, we're having a little technical difficulty. I'll have you on Monday. How's that? I don't know. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, we'll take care of it. Don't worry about it, buddy. We'll do it Monday. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, folks, we'll get this taken care of. Uh, this was... Um, uh, problem on my end, unfortunately, but we'll get that taken care of. We'll have Arch on on Monday. He'll be our guest on Monday, and we'll go over some of these things uh, that we're that we're watching. So um, those are the, the the key things that we want to keep in mind. We do have this Bradley date. Let's get this chart that Arch uh, sent us. I want to bring this back to us so we can see it uh, again. It shows the overall market. I'll be right back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new Market Safe Emerging Currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. We broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, Trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, I wanted to talk just a little bit more about the foreign exchange markets. Those are my uh, favorite markets, of course, because uh, they, they fit with my lifestyle uh, 24 hours a day, five and a half days a week. And um, they, they don't trade too well. They trade uh, enough during Asia, but I don't do anything in the Asian session at all. The main thing I look for is the London Open. That's at... Um, Oh, it's at one o'clock in the morning, uh, my time here. Uh, excuse me, folks. It's at, uh, let's see, eight is one, five is one. That makes it at 10 o'clock at night here uh, is the uh, London Open, as I recall. And um, let me, I better make sure I do that right. It's uh, eight o'clock. You add five hours. That takes you to one o'clock in the morning, New York time, which makes it 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock at night here. That's the opening of London. The reason why that's important, folks, is uh, London is the heartbed of foreign exchange. Uh, and uh, believe me, if that is, that's non-negotiable. And that's when the, the people come in. And they're usually there about two hours beforehand, but they get ready to, to, to make their books. And what they're doing there is they uh, are lining up what they have to hedge against. In other words, if uh, Mazda has done a huge deal with uh, Sweden, they have to convert the uh, uh, you know Japanese currency, the yen, into the, the euro so that they can pay that and, and such and such back and forth. The big news, of course, in, in uh, foreign exchange is the fact that the Japanese renminbi, the yuan, Chinese yuan, is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, it's starting to get some volatility. Well, it's it has some volatility, but not like some of the others. But it's getting more and more liquidity, and people are getting more and more accustomed to doing. The problem is, is the Chinese banks, the Chinese banks of the of the ten largest banks in the world, five of them, the top five are Chinese. So if you get an idea of what the, what's going on over there, that, that should give you an idea. So when you're dealing with that, you're dealing with a country that. Uh, you know, doesn't play by laws like, uh, well, I don't know if any of them do or not, but uh, you, have to pay, you have to pay attention to that. That's why the price structure uh, is really the thing that we watch is because that's the one thing you can depend on. If prices are going higher, there's more buyers. If prices are going lower, there's more sellers. And we're seeing this in the stock indices. Now, today, you know, being a Friday and the end of the month, I'm going to check the open interest. And if the open interest drops big again today, like it's been doing, um, that tells me that there's, uh, you know, the, the shorts are covering, buyers are leaving the market, and there's going to be a vacuum under under it. And I want to try to take advantage of that. You know, that's the what it's about. Take it, you know, take advantage as you see it. That's really what we're uh, what we're trying to do. So we'll watch it very very closely. Now, 
Let's just take a look here at the New York Stock Exchange. This is a weekly, and we're going to be up again this week, of course, because we're at the end of the week right here. You'll see here that we have a uh, long-term uh, New York Stock Exchange uh, chart that's uh, we're up at the 1.41 ratio. The thing is that we've left two gaps. We left a gap last week, and we left a gap this week. Uh, folks, you, you don't see that. So this is an exhaustion gap, in my opinion. But how high it's going to go, we'll have to wait and see till we get through this Bradley date on Wednesday. And uh, that'll be a very interesting one because that's when the, the model turns down and it stays down. Uh, it has one little bounce in December, but it stays down for well over a year. But uh, we don't bring that out until uh, late October, early November for what the prediction is uh, for 2018. So we'll, we'll watch that as we, uh, as we go through looking at some of these things. I'll put that Dow up here so you can see it because uh, this does not show that the Dow will be going into new high ground here, I believe, this morning. If not, it's going to be very, very close. And you'll see that we're right over that date, and that's going to be going to be pretty interesting anyway to see uh, what's going to happen to it. Originally, I thought that August 8th around that uh, lunar eclipse that we had was going to be something significant, but all it was was a, a little bit of a, a small bottom, I guess, and now we're coming in uh, to this level right here. So it's going to be an interesting week coming up. That is absolutely for sure, no matter what. So watch that one very, very closely. Now, I had another question uh, about the uh, Treasury notes. I wanted to bring this up here to let you know because we have broken down uh, on the uh, Treasury note chart. Uh, this is a, a daily chart. As you can see, we busted through the 78% retracement and also the 50% retracement. Uh, now what we've done is we've been able to rally back to touch that level again. So that's going to be something that is going to be uh, – Really good. Hey, we got a caller this morning. Uh, John from Philly. John, are you there? Uh oh. Maybe I'm taking the make call. It. I uh, wanted to call on in in lieu of uh, Arch Crawford having uh, phone snafus. So, uh, well, good morning to you. Good morning to you. What can I help you with, my friend? Um, it's so funny. Uh, the bonds and the T notes. Um, and I, uh, you just started talking about those. So here's uh, the very specific question I have for you. Um, the, uh, and I wanted to ask if you could focus for me on the, say, the hourly chart on the T-Bond futures contract, that ZBZ contract. Uh, that contract sold off this week, fell under 153.16 down to 152, mm -hmm. and now has uh, bounced can you share with us, as a trader, where you'd see a low-risk uh, reshort sale, please? No problem, John. I'm going to put it up here to take a look at it. But to me, it's very, uh, very clear that if we get to this uh, 153.05 level, that's going to be a 382 retracement. It's going to be up about uh, exactly one handle from the bottom that we made uh, several days ago, that would be a very low risk. I wouldn't risk more than 10 pips if you did that. But when a market's in a really strong trend, history tells us that if it rallies back to the 382, you should pay a particular attention to it. And that's that's what I try to do is to, to match that. And it's getting up there quietly, which is you'd like to see. So um, that's what I'm looking at. At 153.06 uh, is the number that I'm watching in uh, the, the Christmas bonds. Uh, that is so helpful. Um, and let me let me follow up that question in your answer, please, and ask if the uh, T bonds surpassed that uh, that Fib 382 mark up at 153.06. Do you have any traders' rules of thumbs that you found successful over the years? in yeah. looking for a higher number to short against in in you know this pattern that seems to <laughs> be unfolding nicely lower 
<laughs> Donna, the reason why I'm laughing is I'm thinking of our president the other day when he was talking about these people kneeling for the X. He said, fire the SOBs. I was thinking, I, I was going to say, I get the hell out because I'm wrong. <laughs> so uh, I'll, ta I'll, take my, I'll take my shot at 153.06, and I'll be out at 153.16. After that, I don't know where it's going to go. So I try to gotcha. not stand in front of it, you know. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I uh... – and you and I both know we're uh, we're wrong constantly, but yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> this is true. Uh, Lord. Um, could I also ask just to follow up? Well, uh, stay with on us, the Euro. John. We, we will take the Euro, but we got to pay a few bills here. Stay with us, and we'll cover the Euro when you get back. Okay. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts, as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, talking with John from Philadelphia about the euro. John, I posted the chart of the euro uh, intraday so you could take a look at it. And that's the same scenario that we're seeing in the bonds. You see, I was looking to sell the euro at this uh, uh, 118.38 level. It got to 118.32 and then, you know, dropped just like the bonds. I was looking to sell those at 153.04. Uh, they got to 153 and then dropped uh, half a handle. 
And it's, you know, the only way you can get in those is by using my exclusive proprietary indicator, my oscillating oscillator that I uh, have I have available for $100,000. Oh, the last one was just sold. I'm sorry, John, you just missed it. Oh, <laughs> you know, you just don't know. You just don't know which of these is going to hit. So you got to, you know, you got to kiss a few frogs before you find the princess. That's it. Damn, missed that fall sale special. So, yeah, yeah. On, uh, on the Euro, thank you for uh, posting that uh, hourly chart uh, on Tiger TV. Uh, the follow-up question is this. Can you pull back, say, the daily? What I'm wondering, or the weekly, what I'm wondering about is this idea. The Euro, you know, double bottom down at 105, 104 over the past couple of years. And then we've broken out of that two-year range, and that two-year range was defined by a high of 117, 116. So we broke out. Now we've come right back and held 117. Question, is 117 potentially a new floor with a rally back up to 121, 125? And if so, should, uh, is it uh, a decent speculation to be looking for buys? Uh, in the euro, correct. Again, well, the only, the only is it, there's a possibility, but the the buy would have to come in when we retest the breakout level, which would be at the 117 level. That's the way I would look at it. I would like to see a an A B C D structure, you know, come in at that level because right now it's still on the downside. You know. Thanks for uh, thanks, thanks for, for calling in, buddy. I appreciate it. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.